Well, all's quiet on Capitol Hill this morning as the House has come to a halt. After a last minute deal to keep the government open, Republicans are scrambling to find a new Speaker of the House after ousting Kevin McCarthy. Now, the problem is that party divisions run deep. It's still unclear if those in the majority can unite behind a single leader. And after days of his own name being floated for the position, GOP presidential frontrunner and former president Donald Trump is putting his weight behind a Capitol Hill ally. Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson joins us now for more. It's going to be interesting to see how this impacts the speaker's race. A majority of House Republicans still support former President Trump. So when he speaks, they listen. Former President Donald Trump announced on Truth Social that he would endorse Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan for speaker. Bring the team together and take the message to the country. Jordan, a close ally of Trump, was the first to announce his candidacy, arguing he believes he can unite the conference. Uh, and I also think I can, I can take our message to the American people so the, so the, the country knows what we're trying to do and, what we're, and how we're working for them. Republican Congressman Steve Scalise and Kevin Hearn say they too are running for speaker. But South Dakota Republican Dusty Johnson says there are some issues to work out first. It's just going to be the same, the same stupid clown car, but with a different driver. Until the next speaker is elected, the House is at a standstill, unable to conduct business with a looming November deadline to fund the government. Louisiana Republican Garrett Graves agrees with the decision to send lawmakers home until next week. There's a lot of urgency for us to act. The emotion was so strong there wouldn't have been a productive time together. Right now, the House is expected to vote for a speaker next Wednesday. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson, back to you. Thank you, Rashad. Well, Richard Gordon is a lawyer, a veteran political consultant at all levels of government. He joins me this morning to talk about the stalemate inside the Capitol. Richard, it's been too long. Good to see you, my friend. Good morning. It's good to see you again. Thanks for having me on again. All right. So eventually Republicans select a new speaker. Congress returns to work. Do you anticipate any lingering consequences once they reach the point when it comes to working relationships? Well, we'll have to see how bitter this gets. Um, I do, actually. I, I think this is going to be a very difficult situation for the Republicans. I think they're going to have a very difficult time uh, uniting. I think it's ironic that Congressman Jordan feels he could unite this caucus because I don't think he could get to 218. But be that as it may, I think we'll see what type of deals have to be made to get someone over the top. And I think the people who are left out are going to be a bit bitter. And, and look, there are eight people here who voted against McCarthy, and there's a lot of anger, a lot of anger over what they did. So we're going to see that, uh, that play out throughout the end of this year and into next year. So the, the two main players at this point seem to be Steve Scalise, the current majority leader. Very conservative, but he's got some sympathy because of the, the shooting he went through uh, some years ago. Jim Jordan, as you said, the, the other key player. Now, Trump has already put his support behind Jordan. Um, Jordan is kind of the burn it down guy, ignored his subpoena to appear before January 6th. What is your expectation between those two guys of who has the better chance of working across the aisle and with their own conference? Well, I think those are really different questions. I think Jim Jordan is clearly in the lead, uh, and he was before uh, former president endorsed him. Um, and I would think he would, have been in a two-way race, I would think he would have the uh, the better chance. You know, unfortunately, Congressman Scalise, not only uh, the illness he suffered a number of years ago because of the shooting, but has also been suffering uh, more lately from cancer. I don't know how that will affect uh, the, the vote here. Uh, I think both of them are going to have serious issues. They're both significantly to the right of a lot of members of this caucus. And bringing them together is going to be a, an extremely difficult thing for either of them to do. I think Scalise would have a better opportunity. He's not a burn it down type of guy, but he is a firebrand conservative. And so I think it'll be difficult for either of them to reach across the aisle. Um, I think Scalise will have a much better chance. I think there's a lot of anger, a lot of bitterness towards Jim Jordan. I think what he's doing on the Hunter Biden uh, investigation, on impeachment, on a whole bunch of issues will make it almost impossible, impossible for him to work with Democrats and clearly impossible for him to work with the White House. 
Of course, on Kevin McCarthy's way out the door through the uh, secretary, the speaker pro tem, um, uh, took the offices away from Nancy Pelosi and Stanley Hoyer, at least giving one of them uh, over to uh, to um, uh, McCarthy. Question is, is that a good way to sort of end a term, begin a new one? And secondly, if you're the new speaker, do you require that that rule that allows for one person to call for your removal, that that ru removal goes away? And who agrees to that? Well, look, the absolute pettiness of kicking Congressman uh, Hoyer and Speaker Pro Tem Pelosi out of their Capitol offices is is just beyond comprehension. I mean, you need to work with these people and uh, they should be respected. And just the Democrats should respect the uh, former Republicans uh, who had leadership positions and vice versa. Um, as far as how how this moves forward. Well, um, the, the one the one person can remove you rule. Well, the one person, uh, thank you, the one person rule has to go. This is horrible. You cannot have four, five, six, seven, eight, one person stop the government. The House is you know, a vital part of the government. We cannot move forward with a House that doesn't move. And there's always going to be one outlier, one person who just isn't happy with you about something. Um, I Look, I wouldn't want the job if it came with these uh, requirements. Well, so I think... I think McCarthy thought he could hold it together, but clearly that was not ever going to be. And arguably, of course, eight Democrats, uh, I'm sorry, eight Republicans go against him. It's almost a tail wagging the dog situation. Absolutely. Um, there, there are some calls that Matt Gates and perhaps some of the others should face consequences, removal from the caucus, removal from their committees. Do you think there should be punishment uh, under the leadership of a new speaker or should bygones be bygones? Oh, the bygones are never bygones in politics. I think there should be rules. I think there should be consequences. Um, I think they should very harshly deal with uh, Congressman Gates and what he did. Um, it has stalled the entire country. I don't think people should be getting away with stuff like this. Look, I, I can't tell the Republican caucus what to do, but um, my strong advice would be to deal with the strong so it doesn't happen again. Um, there was no need for this. There was no reason for this. I mean, you could like uh, Speaker McCarthy or not. But what he did was keep the government open. And he literally threw his speakership down in order to do that. I respect him for what he did. And I think most of the members of Congress on both sides of the aisle do. So yeah, I, I think there should be consequences to the eight people who did something which is just, in my mind, unfathomable. Unless there is a speaker, no action happens in the House. We are less than 40 days away from an, a budget having to be passed. What is your sense? Do they get it together by then? Or are we facing another crisis? Um, it's all going to depend on whether they have a speaker who could who could bring this caucus together. I personally believe that they're not going to be able to do it. I think the next unless they get rid of the this is all tied together, Paul. I think the next speaker has to get rid of this one person um, vacate rule, because if you don't, then they're it's incapable of striking a deal by definition in a Congress that is so closely divided, you know, just four seats here. You need help from the other side on almost everything. And um, they're going to need help to get this uh, continuing resolution over the borderline like yeah. McCarthy did. Now, are we going to have a same situation? We're going to have a speaker for 40 days and they're going to kick that person out? I, I don't think so. I am truly hoping, Paul, that the caucus gets wise, picks a much more moderate speaker, yeah. uh, and then we could go forward in that way. Someone who even Democrats could support if they wanted to. I'm not saying they would. Right. I do think there's a good argument for why they should. Um, I think it would I think it would quiet the far right yeah. if they did, but um, and make them irrelevant. And I think that would be exciting. But I don't expect that to happen. Uh, Richard, with a minute left, let's go to the Democratic side for a moment. Uh, Joe Biden, who did have RFK Jr. running against him as a Democrat. He now looks like he's going as an independent. Cornell West, yeah. supposed to be the Green Party candidate. He's going as an independent. So we've got all these people as independents running a Green Party candidate yet to come. How worried are Democrats of, of people who will potentially siphon votes away from President Biden? I think they should be very, very, very worried. Look, Joe Biden is going to beat Donald Trump in a binary election, a, an election between Biden and Trump. Biden is going to be president. He won uh, more than 7 million votes in Trump last time. He got 74 more electoral votes. But if you have a guy like Cornell West in and Bobby Kennedy in, and let's make believe they get 2% of the vote in any state that Biden won. Biden would probably lose some of those really close states. And I looked at this, Paul, and if you look at five states, just five states, uh, Michigan, Georgia, Nevada, Wisconsin, you look at you look at them um, and you add up the electoral. That's seven. if yeah. he loses two percent of the vote in each of those states. 
he will win by one vote. Well, that's I right. don't think this is going to happen. This yeah, is a very big worry for the Democratic Party. Yeah, it's not a 50-state election. It comes down to those few states. Richard Gordon, political strategist, attorney, thanks for being with us. We'll talk to you again soon. This process is just getting underway. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Right. Enjoy your Sunday. And still to come on WGN TV Political Report, a rare primary election battle is brewing in Chicago's Latino community. We're going to tell you about it when we come back.